So when you've got your sales order, and I am going to go in and I'm going to put in another couple of lines on this sales order just for the sake of the exercise. So they're going to take a JB Office print triple one one, and they're going to also take uh, a JB Office print. It's JB Office print month this month, so it's they got a JB Office print eleven eighty six. So these are the three different products they've got, and maybe they decided that they actually wanted ten of these and they wanted five of these. So you can see you got a lot of flexibility there in terms of being able to work your way around the screens, um, be able to jump between the fields as and when you need them. Now, here's the scenario as we're talking about deliveries. They might say, you know what, we actually want to get 10 of these, but we want five on this date and five on this date. So you wanna put a separate delivery date Per, um, per line. So if you want to do that, you've got a couple of things you could do. You could, of course, use the blanket order functionality if it was a really big scenario. But in this more simple scenario, what you could do is you could say, you know what, for this particular product, the JB Office print um, 1111, they're going to put in five there, and then I'm going to add it again. All right. And there it is, our double one, double one, and I'm gonna put in five here. And then what I now need to do is I now need to be able to specify a different delivery date for each one of these lines. So how do I do that? You're probably looking at it going, oh, I don't know, how do, you, how do you do that, Richard? Well, remember, what we need to do is we need to add the delivery date field either to the grid or what we can do is we can right click on that line and we can say show the row details and then you'll see here as we've got all of this information one of the fields that should be available to me here is the delivery date all right and there it is just a little bit further down there's my delivery date so this one I can say you know what I actually want this uh, these five I want those to be delivered uh, next week. All right, so uh, you've got five are going to be delivered today and uh, another five will be delivered next week. And of course, what happens in business one is once you've set that, and I'm just going to quickly go in here and I'm going to add that sales line or that sales order and I'll say yes. What happens in business one now is that delivery date gets tracked. So as we go through the process of creating a delivery, then it's obviously going to pick up those two separate delivery dates because you're able to run your delivery processes and select what delivery date you want. Now, let's just call up that sales order again because you might be in a scenario where there's nothing spectacular about this order. You just want to push it across into um, a delivery. So in that scenario, you can go here and you can say, well, I want to copy it to a delivery. And you'll see the, the next available step in the process is, is shown here. But you can, don't forget, we talked about this earlier, you can just jump straight to an AR invoice. All right, so maybe you don't need to go and do a picking slip or a packing slip or, or anything like that. You just wanna go straight to an invoice because it's a cash and carry customer or something like that. So you can do that. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create this and I'm gonna copy it to a delivery. I'm going to acknowledge that those um, that, that that's the situation again, and you can switch those uh, options on and off, and you can put parameters on them. So you can say, look, if it's within X amount of their commitment limit, then don't show me the warning or whatever. The other thing you can do there as well is, of course, you can trigger a workflow where it will put the order on hold, so it turns it into a draft and then triggers an approval, but we'll talk about that in another session. So here it is, here's my delivery, and you'll see I've got um, my five plus five. Now it doesn't care about the delivery date in this scenario, okay, because it's just basically said, um, just take the entire sales order and deliver it. But what you can do is you can go in here and you can say, all right, this particular line, I'm not gonna include this, on this particular delivery. So I can delete the row, right? And that will keep that, that sales line open. And I'll then say add. And now, 
it's just, now this is where it starts creating accounting transactions. So you'll start seeing some of these messages coming up about you cannot change the document after you've added it. All right. Um, if you got, if you need to make a change, then obviously you need to put in the correct accounting document to reverse it or make the necessary adjustments. So I'll say yes to that. And so that's now done. My delivery has been created. So if I go and look at that delivery now, I've got my delivery and then I can right click on here and you'll see the option is that I can now print my packing slip. I can now print my inventory posting list and I can also now see what is the journal entry that was created as a result of this delivery. All right, so if I want to go and do packing slip, I just right click on there, choose packing slip. It's going to give me the ability to do some additional um, package consolidation if I want to, to do the package calculation, how many boxes, how many packages, because business one can do that calculation for you. All right, if you've got that information set against your products, but I can just say, yep, that's all correct. And I'm going to select this one. I've got five of those, five of those, and one of those and then I'm going to update it and then I'll say OK and then I can now go and generate my packing slip OK and print out the associated documentation that goes together with that so that's my delivery done so that's one way of doing a delivery now there is another mechanism by which you can create your deliveries As a matter of fact this is an area we haven't touched on yet but right throughout SAP Business One, there are what we call document generation wizards. So let's go and take a look at this just quickly. So if I go into the sales module, you'll see that I have um, down here, I have my document generation wizard. All right, so I can go in here into my document generation wizard and I can say, you know what? I want to create um, uh, all of the deliveries for all of my sales orders that match a certain set of parameters. Now what you can do if you do this on a regular basis, so you might say, you know what, in the morning I process all of the orders for one particular delivery run um, and then I might also process another delivery run in the afternoon. All right, so I've got all these different options there available to um, to play with and I can set these and save them as parameters. So I'm just gonna create one for now though and I'm just gonna call it my default parameter set. Uh, I'll just call it default actually because um, there's a limited number of characters that you can use there and down here we'll put uh, default parameter set. Now by the way, you'll see down in the bottom here in your status bar when you're hovering or you're set on one of those fields it'll show you the number of characters so the set name can only hold 20 characters and the description can hold 100 characters so I'll just go in here and say this is my default parameter set and then I'll say next and so now it's going to start asking what are the, the parameters that I'm utilizing. So my target document here is going to be deliveries. So by default, the assumption is that this is then going to apply to sales orders because it's the sales orders that are the previous step to the delivery. All right, what's my posting date? What's my document date? And then what's my numbering series? We'll talk a little bit about that in another session, but then I can also go and specify here, how do I want these delivery documents um, to be summarized? Do I want them summarized by item or summarized by document? Uh, do I want to do this for items or items and service? And so on and so forth. How do I, do I want to use the current exchange rate? Uh, and then I'll say next. And then I can really start to narrow it down and say, okay, only select documents between this date and this date or a delivery date between this date and this date. Um, you can specify how it gets sorted. You can also go in here and you can use an expanded selection criteria where there are additional parameters, additional fields that you can select. All right, so you might say, you know what, I only want to select those transactions where the shipping type is equal to um, UPS red because I know that my UPS red orders have to be picked first for the sake of the exercise. All right. Um, 
and so on and so forth. Now, you'll see right now, the next button is not active. That's because it still wants me to specify some additional information. So what, are, what documents do I wanna pick up? Well, I wanna pick up my sales orders. Now, as soon as I've said that, it now gives me the option to go on to next, but you'll also see when I've selected sales orders, right, what happens? My allow partial delivery option appears, and then I also have the ability to select my numbering series here. So I'll then go and say next, and then how do I want these consolidated? Do I want consolidation on the, the, the document? So what does this mean? You might have five sales orders for one customer. Do you want those five sales orders to be consolidated down to one delivery and then potentially consolidated down to one invoice? Or do you want a separate delivery per invoice? All right, so that's what this consolidation is all about. And then of course, you have some expanded consolidation options that are available to you here. So, you know, a lot of work's been done uh, fairly recently with the document generation wizards uh, in recent versions to make it um, a lot more powerful. And this is again, not to, to go into sales pitch mode because that's not our role here at ASUG, um, but this is one of the reasons why I believe personally um, and I'm a customer too, by the way, don't forget, um, why I believe it's so important to stay current on your maintenance so that you get access to all these new features. That's why I stay current on my maintenance um, and I pay my maintenance uh, invoice every, every year when it comes out. So again, important. Uh, and then you can say, all right, well, I don't want any consolidation at all. And then you say next, you can specify, all right, I only wanna pick orders for a specific customer. All right, or you can say, you know what, I'll just, I'll say all of my customers. So now it's basically looking at all those other parameters and saying, all right, these are all the customers that actually have sales orders in the system at the moment. And you can go in here and you can switch them on and off. And then what do I wanna do when there is something not right with the underlying document? If the document is missing some information that's, that's mandatory, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna to skip to the document? Do I wanna to skip to the next customer? Do I wanna stop and ask the user to confirm? So you've got all these different options here. Um, you know, missing data, bookkeeping and inventory. So your bookkeeping, this is if there's accounting information that's missing. Then I'll say next. So what I can do now is I can save the parameter set and run it. I can just run it or I can go in here and I can save the parameter set and exit. So now I'm just gonna save the parameter set and exit because I don't wanna run it. But now you'll see, there we go. The save operation has been completed successfully. And then I can say finish. So now if I go back into my document generation wizard, I select that, I say next. You'll now see, there you go, there's my default parameter set. So do I wanna build a new one or run the existing one? So I'll choose the existing one and away we go. I can go through and make changes if I want to. So um, if I need to make some one-off changes or I can just go through and say next, next, next. Um, again, I can create this as a new parameter set or uh, I can go and I can run the wizard and it's gonna create a number of documents. And it's saying you cannot cancel the operation, so do you wanna continue? So this is an important question. This is what's gonna you know, go through potentially. If you make a mistake and you've got a thousand sales orders there, you could potentially go in here and you could create the deliveries for a thousand sales orders, all right? So you do wanna be very, very careful when you do this because you can always come in here and say no and then just go back and double check, all right? So very, very good, very uh, nice flexibility there. Uh, and if you're really paranoid, what do you do? Before you run it, you take a backup. So worst case scenario, you can always restore back to the backup if you made a mistake. But you'll get into the habit of, of, of making sure you double check these things before you, you, know, you, you tick the box and push that through, all right? So that's, the delivery process uh, and then once you've got the deliveries created you can then go on to the next step now an important point to remember business one gives you the option as i said before to make these processes as simple as you need or as complex as you need 
All right, so I could just go and generate those deliveries now and, and that's the end of the, pro well, that's not quite the end of the process. I then need to create invoices. Um, but then that would be the end of the process, right? Now, I might have a more complex process. I might be processing hundreds or thousands of orders every day uh, and I have a really busy warehouse. So for this reason, SAP Business One has what's called uh, a pick and pack manager. So that's our simple process that I've just shown you. Um, under the inventory module, you'll see here you have pick and pack. And what the pick and pack allows you to do, it allows you to break up the process into these separate sections so that um, you can select all of your sales orders and you can narrow these down. So, you know, you can just do a pick and pack for one particular warehouse or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm just going to run this now. I'm going to come back and we're going to do a separate session on looking at pick and pack in more detail. But you'll see this then gives you the ability to track these orders through the different stages. So you can say, look, I've got um, all these orders and I want to select these orders. And then what I want to, what I want to do is want to, I want to release them to the pick list. Okay. And then I can see what's been released into the pick list. So I can select release so I can see what's been released for picking. And then as things get picked, I can then come in here and click on here and say, okay, this will now show me all the products that have been picked. All right, so you've got some really nice um, additional multi-step functionality there. And then you can go one step further, of course, and you could be using a solution like Resolve from um, Achieve IT Solutions, or you could be using um, you know, the solution from Nware or any number of additional um, solutions that help you manage that pick and pack process as part of an advanced warehouse management solution. So, so the solution can be, you know, extended out with that additional functionality. So you can get really industrial strength capabilities, or you can keep it as simple as you want. All right, so uh, that's a little bit of a note there about the pick and pack manager. When we come back, we're going to look at the next step in the process, which is generating our invoices.